Welcome to our June 12th Career Focus Friday. Um, we're happy to be able to, to reach out with industry professionals uh, here at MBS 8 Euro to uh, give our, our members and other interested viewers a chance to uh, take part, at least virtually, in a discussion uh, with a number of uh, professionals uh, from several areas uh, in our industry. And today we're happy to have Eric Anderson, uh, who is an editor based in the LA area, joining us. Uh, Eric has uh, extensive credits, which, I, <laughs> which I'm not going to go through. You can look, you can, you can look them up on IMDb and, and other places. But uh, he's he's worked with over a hundred with with editors who have won over a hundred or excuse me directors who have won over a hundred uh, prestigious awards for uh, for the the works that they've directed. Uh, Eric won an, an Emmy for a Community of Caring for uh, the American Heart Association. Um, he he's also a director, and he serves uh, on the board of directors for the Motion Picture Editors Guild. Uh, and as a judge for the 47th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards. Um, so Eric, thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, using uh, some of your, your, your time to, uh, to help us out here, um, to provide an, uh, an experience for our, our members. Yeah, um, I'm happy to be here and talk to you today. I'm gonna jump right into uh, to the questions that we talked about. Um, and so really the first one is, uh, can you tell us uh, what are some of the differences uh, in editing different types of productions, um, feature films, scripted TV, non-scripted TV, documentaries? Um, what, how can you enlighten us on the, on the differences wow, start, of the, 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 start the work out with of the a hard one, huh? Well, the, the, the work they, of, of the editor, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the simplest thing on scripted, of course, it has a script on documentary or reality, uh, you make the script as you edit. Uh, for uh, reality TV, you know, they have some idea what they want to capture, you know, these, um, like the Kardashians, right? They'll set up scenarios like, what are the Kardashians going to do this week? They're going to go, go to their company. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. So they have some kind of format of what they're going to be capturing, but they don't know what they're going to be capturing because it's happening live in front of them um and with documentaries you know you're doc you're shooting a subject and sometimes you don't know where it's going to go a great example is a documentary i shot on my friends it's called the fright gallery we had been doing a haunted house for 25 years and i sensed that we were coming to an end of doing this so i decided um to shoot our last year where we were as a group working together on it and at the end i knew i had an ending but and the ending was, will we come back? But then a couple of years later, we actually got invited to the Obama White House in 2010 to decorate the White House for Halloween. And I had my ending. Now, the documentary is still not done <laughs> because it's got so much footage I have to still cut together and, and whittle it down into a cohesive piece. Because sometimes there's just so much content, you need to whittle it down and see what your audience is uh, going to be interested in and, and still tell a coherent story of like 10 to 15 people in this documentary. So it's very difficult. But that's a great example of, of uh, not knowing how your story is gonna end and then you find your story in the editing. Okay, um, well certainly um, the students uh, watching this are very familiar with, with, with uh, the technical aspects of editing, editing programs and, and, and so forth. But uh, what other skills have you discovered um, that you really need to be a successful editor beyond simply knowing how to technically do the edits? I think if you're going to be a successful editor, you're, you can't close yourself off to learning new skills all the time. I, I feel that every project I'm on, there's something that I learn new, either a new app or a uh, visual effects software, you know, for putting in visual effects into a show. Uh, sound design, you know, the, the technology is always changing as you're, as you're editing. And the, even the editing systems are getting better as you move along. So you're re trying to retrain, or at least I do, I try to retrain my mind to use some of the new tools that are given to me from the editing uh, software 
uh, not always effectively because I always go into my old habits, but I really try to embrace what the uh, computer companies are coming up with with the new editing software or the effects packages or the sound design uh, things. Uh, does that kind of answer your question? I, what's the question again? Sure. Well, does it, well, other skills. Uh, how about? Uh, yeah, other skills. Well, people skills is the most. People. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. what? The, yeah, people skills is the like number one thing that you have to learn, especially working in this profession, because there are so many talented people and you need to learn that even though you are, I always think of editing as an hourglass. You start with production at the top, so it's very wide, and then it narrows down to that little nozzle in the middle, and that's you, the editor, and then it opens back up for post-production, visual effects, sound design, and things like that. So everything is going through you, and there's a lot of pressure there. And so you tend to get really stressed, if, especially if there's a time crunch on you and you have a lot of people behind you expecting you to produce what they all give you notes on or want to see the show to be. So you just need to learn to be a people person, get along, not be possessive over the content that you're creating, even though you have autonomy, like during the editor's cut, you know, you have to, after you get your editor's cut and present your vision of what you think it should be, you need to be collaborative majorly collaborate with all the people around you as you get your notes and then get it whittle it down to where everybody's happy including you because my first passes I'm very happy with my first passes but I'm really happy after everybody else has come in and given their notes and then it's something that I can be very proud of when I'm done with it a kind of a follow-up here can do you have uh, some experiences that you can share of uh uh, perhaps working with with directors, uh, some situations, well, some yeah, situations well, the, that came greatest, up. That, yeah, uh, the greatest thing is there is a lot of tension because there's a lot of time crunch with post production. You know, we only have a certain amount of time to produce the amount of work that we need to produce, and there is a lot of work. I don't think people really realize how many how much pressure is on an editor. But whenever you get into some kind of tension situation, or when I do, I like to crack a joke. I like to tell them to crack a joke. If they sense me getting a little tense, tired, whatever, so just crack a joke. And then I'll, I'll say life isn't so serious and I'll relax a little bit and get through the work. But what I really like to do if there's like, oh, I know I shot that, sh that take. I know I have that footage. I know I have that look. I know I have that. I'll say, I bet you a quarter it doesn't exist. <laughs> and that always seems to break the tension in the room because then we look for it. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to win that quarter. Here I go. Here I go. Okay. Am I going to win? Okay. All right. You won the quarter. All right. Let's move on. You know what I mean? And it's fun by the end of the um, editing session or by the end of the time we lock the show, you know, it's kind of fun to count out who has the most quarters in the room. With, uh, with scripted productions, you've got multiple takes. Um, how do you how do you decide which takes to go with? Well, first of all, I watch everything, and I really do mean I watch everything. Yeah, that's the first part of my job is just taking in everything. It's like a puzzle, you know. You don't just start working on a puzzle. You spread all the pieces out, and you look at all the pieces, and then you start saying, "Hey, this connects with this, and this this connects with that," and you start putting it together. So you you. First thing you do is you read the script. Let's just talk about scripted TV. You read the script and you, you see what the writer wrote. Like if he points something else, you know, point something out, like um, she reaches for the cup. She swirls her, her, her finger around the lip of it. So you're instantly going to look for those close-ups, those things that the writer put in that hopefully the director shot because that's going to become part of your editing. And then the next thing you, you, you study the performances of, the two, let's say two people in the scene. You really study their performances, meaning you watch all the takes. And I, now that they're not, they're still circling takes, but they're printing everything. And what that means is since it's all digital, you're getting everything. And then you can, you can highlight which ones they circled. But I sometimes will watch everything because there's always a little nugget in those non-circle takes that you can put into the cut. So it's just really watching and studying the footage and finding the performance, what the actor's giving you and shaping it to fit the scene or to fit the whole show. Because sometimes once you cut, when you first start out, you might not have their character down and the actor might not have their character too. They're giving you different versions of the character. 
And by the end of the show, you might have to go back and adjust their performances mm. to match the overall arc of, of the show for that episode or for that feature. Um, um, it, it's really funny after, you know, we have like a, a crew rap party and it is really interesting to meet an actor for the first time because you've had such an intimate relationship with them on screen and you've seen everything you've seen their their even when they're insecure about a scene you see them grow into it or you just see everything you know everything about them and you're and then you meet them for the first time and the first impression is oh they're exactly like their character or they're nothing like their character mm. and then the second thing you have this intimacy and you know them and they look at you for the first time and go who who are you Oh, oh, you're the editor. Oh, <laughs> so it's really kind of weird how well you know them and, and their, their features on their face, their eye movements, their tics. You know, it's like you really, you, you really get to know the person intimately through their acting through, through the screen. And I, I really enjoy that part of the process. Have you encountered a situation where you've worked with a director um, multiple times uh -huh. and uh, you, and two things can happen. Uh, you get to know the director so well that, that you know what kind of shots that you're going to be facing, um, or that the, if the director knows you, that, that he or she has an idea of how you're going to handle uh, certain, certain shots, certain takes, whatever. Have you, have you experienced anything like that? Well, that's the greatest thing. When you get to work with the director for a second, third, fourth time, they get to know who you are, you get to know who they are, you become very intimate in terms of friends. They trust you. So they'll come to you after they've shot some and say, oh, Eric, you got a lot of work on this scene. I, I didn't give you what you needed. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I'll take care of it. Um, but also, you know, like there's now a shorthand in the cutting because you do know their likes, their dislikes, mm -hmm. especially if it's on a TV show and the director's coming back for multiple episodes certain things that he doesn't like about a performance of a actor, or he always likes to open wide at the beginning of the scene, or even open up on a close-up at the beginning of the scene and go wide at the end. So there's certain things that you learn about their technique that you can just instantly implement. I can also, on a show, I might not cut with them, but I will watch their show that the other editors are cutting, because we normally have three, two to three editors per show. And by the time they do get to me, since I've studied their directing on other episodes, I might already be keyed into a couple of things that they, that they like and actually present that to them. And they're like, oh, oh, great. You know what I like, you know what I mean? So I do try to get to know who they are. I'll go back and even watch like on feature films, I'll go back and study their films that they've already directed just to get to know them. So I can even talk to them during the editing process. Now on, blah, 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 you did this. Why did you do this? You know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, to me, it's the relationships at the end of the day. Those are the things that you leave with once the show is over with. And that's what I try to enjoy in the midst of the uh, hard work. Okay. One final question before I'll uh, pass it on to Joanna to see if she has any questions here for us. Um, we're in a very different situation now. I won't say very unique because a, a grammatist would uh, shoot me down for that. It's something's either unique or it's not. I, I think we are in a unique situation actually, but uh, what what is going on with, with, with your work? Uh, what kind of adjustments, challenges uh, have you had to face uh, in the midst of uh, COVID-19? Never in my career has the whole industry been shut down. We are, we are shut down. Now, luckily, if you had an editing gig, uh, you are still working. Shows are kind of winding down now. Everything that was started at the beginning of the year or even the beginning of uh, the end of last year. Um, so all those editors, they instantly got shifted to home and they've been cutting from home. And some of them have adapted very well. I've been cutting at home for, for uh, 10, 12 years. So it wouldn't be anything unusual. I have a great setup. I'm actually in my cutting room right now at home. Um, so it's very easy for me to shift to the home working. Unfortunately, I was gearing up to start on something and it completely got shut down. So um, where I adjusted my focus was into helping others. I instantly mm -hmm. took on uh, my mentors getting up there in age. My, and so I decided I called him up and said, whatever you need, groceries, medications, 
help around the house, I'm there for you. So I took that on. I also reached, uh, got since I'm on the board of directors for the Editors Guild, I instantly helped them um, uh, implement some of the safety rules that we're going to go back to work with. And we also reached out to all of our retirees. Uh, IATSE was very generous. They started IATSECares.org, which basically delivers groceries, medications, and even an outreach program just to check in on people and see how they're doing. Because, you know, a lot of people have a tough time uh, being isolated. Um, I myself, uh, editors, I don't think do. That's the funniest thing, because we're always trapped in our little room editing mm -hmm. all the time. So I think this is not affecting us like other people who are very social. Anybody that works on a set is obviously very social and now they're reduced to just staying at home and they're having a problem with it. So IATSECares.org for, for anybody in IATSE has set up a program to reach out and uh, help them. In. And so we've called our volunteers in the Editors Guild up. I mean, we've called our retirees in the Editors Guild and reached out to them, make sure they're doing okay. And I've had some great conversations with them because all of a sudden, I'm talking to some of my uh, editors who have influenced me in my career. And so I had some, I got to ask questions about some of the movies that helped inspire me and got me into this field. And all of a sudden I have the person on the phone. I'm like, well, why I got you on the phone and you're doing okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, so why did you make that decision? And da 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 da. da. <laughs> and I'm so, sure they were happy uh, to talk with you about it too. Yeah, <laughs> and they were because we all have we all have the time uh, sure. too. Yeah. Now, us getting back to work will be very interesting. You know, uh, the the guidelines actually uh, for the whole industry just literally came out today. It's 37 pages, and I look forward to reading through it. Um, I did have my first interview uh, this week for a show that's shooting in Romania. Uh, so that's why they're able to get back up in production. So I do sense that things are starting to gear up. Just it'll be very slow and it'll be interesting how we handle this, like, especially with what's going on uh, right now in the United States. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we need to work out. Um, and so uh, our industry might even be influenced by that stuff too. If you're, uh, if you're able to do so, I'd love to see a copy of those of, of those guidelines. Or if you're yeah, able I can, to send them I can along. email you yeah, on that. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. very good. Yeah, they okay. just came out, so you probably find them online. But I'll give you the short. Oh, okay, that's that's <laughs> great. Thank you, Joanna. What what questions do you have for Eric? Um, well, I want to say thank you so much for like coming on and like talking to me and like everybody. I think it's like a real honor being able to talk to you because like basically what you're doing right now is my dream job. Like I actually want to go to LA to um, pursue a career in editing. I was, I was fortunate enough to go uh, to LA um, with NBS back in March, like before the whole thing, like literally like a week before um, yeah, the whole world. I was there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was able to um, network with um, Alex Flat. She was like a um, editor that came, she edits reality TV. And I was able to actually like talk to her. We got coffee, like I asked her to get coffee and we sat there for like three hours and she told me so much and I was able to learn so much. And I realized right there, like basically what you guys are doing is what I want to do. So I am planning to move to LA like in October, like hopefully everything is done. So I guess my, I have like a two part question. I guess my question is like, um, I know that when I move there, I'm going to have to start off with being a PA. It's typical um, and eventually work my way up. Like, do you have any um, advice on, you know, people like me trying to get into the industry, trying to become editors, but of course with everything happening, it's going to be very, um, it's going to be, I think harder than it probably would, would have been if nothing happened. So I guess like, what is your advice for like someone like me going to be moving across the country, like literally planning on moving across the country in October. Um, so yeah, what is your advice on that? Well, first of all, you're already doing what you need to do, and that is meeting professionals that already work in this field. So today you're meeting me, so you got, you got the contact of me, and then you already met the other editor. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be reaching out to her when you come out to L.A. or before you come out to L.A. I would recommend reaching out to any professional you have met and, and find out what's going on in this business. You know, is it a good time to move out to L.A.? Um, luckily, uh, since you're starting out, the job that you'll be doing is, is, is very much in demand, mm -hmm. though that might shift a little bit because of what's going on. I'll have to see how that, how that works out because I'm not quite sure, but we are in need of post-PAs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's such a great way to get into the cutting room and learn. 
But my advice to you right now, what are you doing to learn the skills of editing already? Have you started cutting your own projects? Have you learned any software editing system, Avid Premiere, Final yeah. Cut 10? You know, yeah. what are you doing right now to educate yourself in the craft of editing? Of course, yeah, I actually learned on Avid. I went to community college my first two years because um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And then I found this amazing major and I fell in love with it. So I learned on Avid um, how to cut. And then I came to Oswego where I'm from or where I went to school and everything was on Premiere. And unfortunately I did all of my like senior level classes at OCC. So when I got here, I was just writing papers. Like that's basically what I did for two years. I just came here to get my bachelor's. And now I'm, my boyfriend's very, very good at Premiere and he's teaching me how to do it. I'm trying to get some freelance stuff. There's, um, in Syracuse, um, they have like a film company here. So I'm trying to get a PA position there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to casting. I want to, I, I really want to do everything. And I know that's kind of like a bad thing to say, like, you know, you should really like, not to me. It's not. <laughs> I, I'm so, yeah, that's I'm exactly what I did when I started out. I did everything and I even yeah. had people tell me, Oh, you can't do everything. Yeah. But in today's world, you can, as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you have all the tools. Now you just have to go buy a camera it, you know, buy your editing software or lease it, you know, every month and, you know, buy lights and start, start shooting, start directing, yeah. start editing. You know what I mean? You can do it now. Like right now you can start reaching out to your fellow uh, college students and say, Hey, if you direct anything, let me cut it for you. I will cut it for you. I have the software. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. As for, I do feel it's very important for you to learn Avid and Premiere. Avid is the number one editing system here in Hollywood, especially on anything you see on all the major networks or uh, cable channels or even on HBO, Showtime, you know, all of those guys. So, but there are occasions where Premiere will slip into those feature, you know, features, television and stuff. And it's uh, assistant editors on Premiere, I think are even more in demand because there aren't that many of them. So knowing that skill would be great. Even for me, if I got a show and they said, you have to cut on Premiere, I'd grumble and, and go, I love Avid, but I can do it. You know what I mean? Because I've been doing this so long. But I would demand having an assistant that really knew Premiere so that it, it started hicking up on me. I would be able to say, here, fix this for me or show me what I'm doing wrong yeah. on this system. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's great to, like I said, it's even great to learn Final Cut Pro 10. You know what I mean? Because there are some benefits. Every once in a while, I, I had a gig where I just needed to pump something out real quick. They had Final Cut Pro 10, I did it and, and uh, moved on. So that's the greatest thing is just learn as many systems and as many skills as you can and start reaching out to your own community, meaning college students or local, like you said, you've already applied for an internship, which is great yeah. and, and stuff. And then also keep in touch with us, let us know where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the professionals that you've met in the context that you met in Hollywood so we can keep an ear out for you and 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 have when something comes up we can say oh well she's getting ready to move out to LA. hey are you coming out anytime soon because guess what i got something for you and it's better that you then move out then knowing that you might have something secure you know yeah um but okay i guess my next my next question would be um i'm a, um so when you finally like like let's say i finally get that pa position i finally get there um what is, um, I guess, what did you do or what would be like the good next step into, okay, I'm a PA, I, I want to start learning. Yep, I have some great things. advice for you on that. Perfect. All okay. right. <laughs> the PA, believe it or not, sometimes tends to be the most, how can I say this properly? The most important job, yet the least visible mm -hmm. because you're starting out. The number one thing is know who you're working with. When you start a show, look them all up and know everything about them that you can. The number second thing is get to know their eating habits. Now, this is going to change because of coronavirus and the way we're going to be feeding. So maybe we'll rely on you more as a PA or we won't. I don't know what's going to happen there. But I can't even begin to tell you how many PAs have blown it because they just don't give a darn about your eating habits. Well, guess what? I'm under a lot of stress. I don't have any time to think about that stuff. I don't ha let alone have any time to stare at an order and figure it out. You know what I mean? Especially if you're going to restaurants that I'm unfamiliar with. But the most successful PAs come in, they actually start to get to know you. And then they come in with a new restaurant and say, hey, Eric, we're going to this new restaurant. And you know, you like chicken salad. They've got an excellent chicken salad here. And da -da 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 -da. 
And I got to tell you, our last uh, PA, uh, Taylor, on um, interrogation, she's going places because she was so impressive. And I will hire her on anything in a heartbeat and help her move up. Because as a PA, if you show you can handle just the, the PA work with an A-plus attitude and an A-plus skill set, you, then you can do anything. You know what I mean? It, it just... It's just how you treat that first job when you're at the bottom. I remember there's a couple jobs um, when I first worked on the rose float for the rose parade, I swept the floor. And then somebody discovered that I could decorate. And then now I've designed three floats in the parade. And actually last year I was deco chair to the Burbank rose float and we won a major award. I mean, you just, you know, you, you got to show people your talents, but also you have to be a professional too. And getting back to knowing people, I had a conversation when I was on Huge with the uh, showrunner of the show, and she had written the book for Wicked. So during the one time she sat in the room with us and ate lunch with us, I said, um, so you're a knitter, huh? You knit. And she's like, how do you know that? And I said, well, I actually watched the documentary on the making of Wicked, and I saw you knitting. And she ended up telling this amazing story of why she knitted. She knitted to the nerves, you know? And she was actually making a scarf for the director of the play. And it just, we connected in me just doing a little bit of research on her and also being a fan because I love the, the, the Broadway musical Wicked. And I got some behind the scenes info that I never would have gotten if I hadn't just looked her up and found out what she did before she worked or I worked on her show, Huge. You know what I mean? So, and people appreciate you taking interest in them. Okay. You know, they really appreciate that. So then they'll remember you. Oh, she asked me that question. You know, she's interested in me. Can I ask one more? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> I actually did look you up as well. Like I, you know, like you just said, I, I did look you up and I noticed that, um, like I went on your IMDb and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I noticed that Good. you worked on a lot of short films, like, like, mm -hmm. short, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, I guess my question is, and I, I noticed a lot of them were kind of towards the, the, like the beginning of your career, like not, maybe not like right in the beginning, but you know, they were sprinkled. Um, I guess, would, would, your be, would your suggestion be to start, maybe start off with short films and like, like and work your way up if you want to be like, um, if you want to be an editor like you are, like, would you say to start off with short films? Like, like I guess, they're, are they easier than bigger? Like, I guess, what is your take on that? Well, sometimes short films aren't easier because... Uh, you know, any successful short has to be short, sweet, and to the point, right? But what I did, what helped me, the reason I took on so many short films, and this is why I got a home editing system, because I noticed all these filmmakers coming out of college, they didn't have any money or couldn't rent you a system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the reason I did it wasn't necessarily, because for me, I had already worked on some pretty big feature films and stuff. But to me, I wanted to meet filmmakers, up and coming filmmakers. And still to this day, I cut shorts. But if there's a short, somebody sends me a script and I love that script and they know how to shoot, you know, um, they know how to shoot something, meaning they know how to shoot the short, you know, they're not joking around, they're a serious filmmaker, I will cut that for them because I want to give them my expertise to help them raise to the next level. And hopefully if they become successful and, I, I, and I'm still working with a couple of those filmmakers mm -hmm. from those shorts that you saw on the IMDb page, I'm still working with them. And they're still rising up and rising up and we're still collaborating together and still working on things together. So I have those relationships that I've built from working on their, and the greatest thing is working on their first, their first project and being there for them and making it successful for them and then growing together as, as filmmakers or, you know, or helping them grow as a filmmaker. Um, and, and then learning to trust you too, because sometimes I'll, I'll tear the whole short apart Mm -hmm. and say this is really what it should be you know you thought this and now I've whittled it down to that and they'll they'll panic sometimes I say go go just go share it with people just get out there sh take a week share it with everybody you can and then come back and it's always funny to have them come back and say oh my gosh you were right everybody loves it it's perfect <laughs> and then it goes on that's why you mentioned at the beginning of this uh this seminar uh 100 prestigious awards you know is that collaboration has brought success to that and and even to us going to Sundance, I cut Debbie John Hunters and it went to Sundance and we ended up winning the audience award for that documentary short. And I've been working with Maria and Matthew since Tackle Box and it's been 
think we've done five, six projects together that have won so many awards. And it's because of that collaboration that we really work really well as a team. And now they're trying to get features started, you know, and I'm hoping they do because I'd love to cut a feature for them. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. It was very informative. Thank you. Okay, well, a lot of, a lot of good thoughts, a lot of, a lot of good suggestions there, Eric. And any uh, final thoughts that you want to pass along to our students uh, about the industry or, or specifically about uh, your role in it? Well, I think it, what's interesting, we're going through a really unique time uh, for, for the world, actually. You know, United States, the United States, we've got even a little more unique time. <laughs> a lot of uniqueness going on right now. So things are, are changing. There's going to be a lot of change, a lot of disruption in the next, you know, half a year to a year uh, with everything. And what I would say to anybody coming up in this business is take advantage of it. Start developing, write stories, write stories of what's going on right now. You know, if you've got an idea, embrace it, write it, film it, direct it, edit it. Um, you know, the tools are there for you guys right now. Take advantage of the time that you have and create and be creative. And, and because that's what filmmaking is. And then start developing while you're being creative and, and creating your content right now. Start developing relationships. People are a little free right now. So if you do reach out to them through LinkedIn or through some other services, I'm sure you might get a response back because a lot of us are sitting at home, uh, uh, you know, doing stuff, but not to the point where we're too busy to respond back to you. So this is a great time to start reaching out to us professionals and asking advice. Um, and uh, yeah, just en embrace the bad and have some good come out of it. And then you'll have something to show for it uh, by, the, by the time this ends, because this will pass and uh, there will be a lot of demand for content and if you actually created something, you can get it out there and show it to somebody. Somebody might just buy it or a film festival will definitely be hungry for it and it might launch your career. So don't just sit around and say, oh, the, you know, the world is treating me badly because of, you know, I can't start my career. You can start your career. Start doing it right now. And that way you'll be ready for when everything gets back up to normal. Great advice and a great way to, uh, to bring this to a close. Eric Anderson, thank you very much for joining us here at Career Focus Fridays. And uh, we really appreciate uh, your, uh, your working with MBSAE Row. Uh, it was great having you at our convention in March and it's good to see you again here uh, on, on CFF. So.